which is 25 million years old. And look, it hasn't changed at all to the modern one. The modern one, the modern caddisfly, is a tied fishing fly. <laughs> and it's still got its hook. <laughs> now, you might put that down to not just ignorance, but sort of carelessness. Um, maybe he didn't look very carefully, but I tracked this down to the website where he stole it, uh, which is a website of a, of a champion um, fishing fly tire. Uh, and um, th there it is. And you notice that the background, you see that sort of grey bit in the background? He's cut it out. He must have worked for a long time in Photoshop on this picture. And he still didn't spot that hook. Or else, or else maybe he thinks that caddis flies really do have hooks. <laughs> well, as I was browsing this um, fishing fly tires website, I came across something else which I thought looked familiar. Um, that's um, a spider made by the fly tire. It's an it's a artificial spider, very beautifully tied, obviously, and I'm sure it's very tempting to the fish for whom it was designed when on the end of a hook. But I thought it looked familiar, and I, I went back to Harun Yahya's book, and sure enough, there it is. <laughs> uh, and um, look, it hasn't changed at all from the one in amber up at the top. Well, <laughs> you can't really see very much of the one in amber, but it doesn't... Even if that was a real modern spider, it wouldn't really make the case very convincingly. Uh, yeah, that's a brittle star, um, and the modern one is a starfish. And again, you can't get more different as long as you stay an echinoderm. Um, now, back to the fossil, uh, the prize for the fossil intermediate. Um, I wanted to make the point that He's got a very, very weird idea of what an intermediate would look like. This idea of um, there aren't any intermediate fossils is a favorite one of all creationists, not just uh, Muslim ones, but, but Christian ones as well. Their constant refrain is, produce your intermediates. There are no intermediates. The fossil record is completely devoid of evolutionary intermediates. This has always puzzled me, because just about every fossil you find is going to be an intermediate between something and something else. And yet they seem to think this is a highly trenchant point that they're making. And it was um, Harun Yahya who finally dropped the scales from my eyes. The reason why these people think there are no intermediates, they've got a very, very weird idea of what an intermediate would look like. Sorry, that's an old slide. Um, there you see a picture that he's uh, put together um, with a baby crocodile on the left and a, uh, some sort of ground squirrel on the right. And what he's saying is, there are no intermediates between crocodiles and squirrels. <laughs> well, you know, why would you expect an intermediate? <laughs> there exists no transitional form. <laughs> Darwinists claim, I'm quoting now, that by undergoing minor changes, living beings evolve from one species to another over millions of years. According to this claim, which is refuted by scientific findings, fish transformed into amphibians and reptiles transformed into birds. This so-called transformation process, asserted to last for millions of years, should have left countless evidence in the fossil record. In other words, during their intense researches for the last hundred years, researchers should have uncovered many grotesque living beings, such as half fish, half lizard, half spider, half fly, or half lizard, half bird. However, although almost every stratum on Earth has been dug, not even a single fossil has been found that Darwinists can use as evidence for their so-called transition. On the other hand, there are innumerable fossils showing that spiders were always spiders, flies were always flies, fish were always fish, crocodiles were always crocodiles, rabbits were always rabbits, and birds were always birds. Hundreds of millions of fossils clearly show that living beings have not undergone evolution, but were created. Hundreds of millions of fossils prove that living beings did not evolve, but were created. 
And that picture sums up what he thinks. There's a starfish, there is a fish, and some kind of a photoshopped um, inter intermediate. I finally realized what these people think an intermediate fossil is. They think you take a modern animal, and you take another modern animal, and you get some kind of a halfway between. It may be that the back end is one animal and the front end is another like that. <laughs> or, or you kind of morph from one to the other. They have the faintest idea what it is that they are criticizing. And I'm, I'm grateful to Mr. Oktar for, uh, for finally opening my eyes to this, to this, uh, weird, uh, to this weird phenomenon. Now, as I said, he has uh, allegedly sued me, uh, and I am going to, I suppose, do something about it. It would be nice if I got some, uh, some sort of official word. What I'm wondering is whether there are any people uh, uh, of, of Turkish origin here who might be able to throw some light on this, this odd phenomenon that, um, that, that I, I learned from the newspapers that I've been sued and not from any official source. And um, this further and the, and the further um, in, any further advice that you can give is there, is there anybody here of Turkish origin? No. Okay. Never mind. Okay. Well, um, I, I'm ready to take questions. Thank you very much. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think Tur Turkey is a, is a, is constitutionally a highly secular country, uh, so it, it certainly would not be a Sharia court. Uh, sorry. I, Oh, right. Okay. Um, any, any questions? Yeah. Uh, have we got to have a microphone, have we? Um, you just said that um, you, didn't, you hadn't come across this idea of strange idea of intermediates, but is that, isn't it also current among American creators? Yes, that I is. Mean, things like the croco duck. Yes, you that is. Yes. Um, uh, th there, are, there are American Christian um, creationists who will say, show me a crocoduck, or show me a fronky, an, an intermediate between a frog and, and a monkey. Um, so, um, it, when you think about it, it's no wonder they think that it's difficult to find intermediates. <laughs> Any more, any more questions there? Yeah. Richard, um, Harun Yahya has makes a big fuss on his website and in his press about how he's challenged you to a debate or invited you to a debate and that you've declined. Is that the case, and would you ever consider, or under what conditions would you consider debating him? I always decline debates with creationists. Uh, I, I've done this ever since um, asking advice from Stephen Jay Gould, who did the same thing. Um, if, you, if you agree to have a debate with them, what you're doing is giving them legitimacy. You're saying there is a serious scientific matter to discuss. Here we are sitting on a platform. It gets even worse when you have the elaborate legalistic rules of debate. Uh, you have 20 minutes for the proposition, 20 minutes for the opposition, five minutes to reply, five minutes to reply. It all creates the illusion that there is some real issue to debate. I hope that I've shown you from these just half dozen slides that the debate would be simply ridiculous. I mean, th th this man doesn't know anything about zoology. He doesn't know anything about biology. He knows nothing about the evolution that he is attempting to refute. He's a complete and utter ignoramus. Many people are. Do you want to use the mic? Because I think it might uh, be recorded. was originally presented to the London Business School, but they thought it was inappropriate to their uh, field of inquiry. So eventually, <laughs> it landed up there. I don't know what we've done with it, but I, if, if I would like to present it to the society, if they have sufficient <laughs> space to store it. Well, um, no doubt that will be gratefully received, or will it? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs>